Oh, Harry. He says this wasn't a court. Uh, there was a court in the building. This wasn't a courthouse. There was a court in the building, therefore it's a courthouse. No rational reason exists in this case. It doesn't have to be a rational reason. It has to be a legitimate government interest, and the rule has to be rationally related to it. The legitimate government interest can be whatever they come up with. It could be just to protect the decorum of the court. Bada boom, bada bing. That's a legitimate government interest. And the pre prevention of filming is rationally related to it. And if you've seen one of the Tucson Three Stooges videos, you will know how it's rationally related to preserving the decorum of the court. Hey, every government agency is free to operate in secret. All they have to do is have a session of a multiple court in the town council chambers. No. No. Um, <clears throat> every government agency is free to operate in secret right now pretty much from the get-go. If you walk into a police station, let's say you're in a state like California where it's next to impossible to get trespassed from a public place or a place that's open to the public like a police station lobby, you could film anything you want in that police station lobby, probably. And what will you be filming? Will you be filming the nerve center of that police station? No, you won't. That will be back somewhere where you can't get to. That police station is free to operate in secret. Now, most, even in California, where, again, it's very hard to trespass people from places that are open to the public, it is not hard to trespass people from places that aren't open to the public like government offices not open to the public that you don't have any right to be there they could trespass you from it they get to operate in basically secret now there are you know freedom of information acts there's sunshine laws there are open government records laws things like that that are designed to shed some light onto what's going on back there in secret and it's not perfect and yes government bureaucracies do try to insulate themselves from um, public scrutiny and yes it is an issue but they don't have to resort to having a court in them a town council chambers can restrict filming anyway if you remember rice v kemper i covered that um there are lots of um, akins akins v knight i think is the case that that referenced a lot of those that's the one where i went over some of those but yeah town council meetings they can restrict or deny your right to film they can uh, they can't stop you from taking notes or from remembering what is being said in there and saying it on the news later or anything like that your testimony is still valid and whatever but <clears throat> they can't even they can already unless state laws state otherwise they can already prevent you from filming in a town council meeting not it not a criminal court period i don't understand what you're going there um if you're thinking that the that courts can only restrict your right to film if it's a criminal court that is incorrect i've never stated that so um, definitely you can't film in a criminal court in federal court i should say period, but whatever. No jury, none of the reasons they use to justify the decisions in the cases you cited. Um, in, in Chandler v. Florida, the Supreme Court looked at Florida's laws and they didn't have an issue with it. And it, they didn't base it on, I was throwing, I was throwing uh, decisions, I was throwing issues that can come up out there. But again, the court can simply say that they're trying to preserve the decorum in the courthouse. That is a legitimate government interest. And they can prevent you from filming because that's rationally related to a legitimate government interest. See the Tucson Three Stooges. And you can, you can look at this back all the way to Adderley v. Florida, where people weren't allowed to protest on the lawn of a jail. What harm could protesting on the lawn of a jail do? Well, the, the sheriff has a legitimate interest in controlling what happens on the lawn of that jail. That's literally his legitimate interest. And not allowing people to protest on it is rationally related to his legitimate interest. Ta-da! It's, I mean... 
when I said it was a low bar that the government wins, it's because it is a really low bar. It is super low. It, the government wins it. 99 times out of 100, the government wins it. Open Public Meeting Acts no longer apply. If there is an Open Public Meeting Act, then it would apply as long as it's not being held in a court or a courthouse. And you can still attend an open public meeting, even if it's in a court or courthouse, and you can take notes and you can be a witness as to what happened inside it. And they will probably have minutes and they will probably have a, a published agenda. Somebody may even be taking notes, like a official notes, like a recorder of some sort. Fighting for the government's authority to stretch logic beyond rationality. I, you disagree with it, but that doesn't make it anything other than what I said it was. So they can treat people asking about a tax bill like complete shit and secret. Well, no, they can't. Um, you can still make a complaint. You are still a witness to what happened. If, if you were there, you're a witness to what happened. If they are recording, if they have surveillance videos and things like that, you can, if you sue them, you can demand they produce those in discovery. And they have to have a really good reason not to. Or else the judge will just demand they do it. And if they don't, then he'll hold them in contempt and et cetera, et cetera. All these videos in which you claim that government gets checked. I have no idea what you're trying to say. All of these videos in which you claim that the government gets checked. I, I don't know what you mean there. Your moral justification for why James is wrong. I, I, never, I never used a moral justification for why James is wrong. James is trying to use morality to justify why he's right. I have used the law to show why James is wrong. Morality doesn't come into it. It's, it's law. Is, is it legal or is it not legal? What's the burden that the government has? What's the burden that the uh, plaintiff has? That's, yeah. A judge can do whatever he pleases. I think he meant to put a period there because he capitalized you. A judge can do whatever he pleases, but it is appealable. So I don't know where you guys, what you guys think happened before there were cameras or audio recording devices, but every court I've ever been into and every court I've ever seen has audio recording, period. They just do. Even the Supreme Court records the audio. Now, they have it and all that good stuff. Um, that doesn't mean you get to, but they have it. And if somebody is appealing their decision, typically the court will have a transcript. Um, a court recorder will prepare a transcript of that audio recording, but they can also get the audio recording if they feel it necessary, if they, if they think that there's something applicable on it. But it's not like, the, it's not like there's no record of what happened in that court. In addition to what the actual transcripts say and what the actual audio shows there's also the witnesses of what the defense saw of what the defense's counsel saw of what the jury if any saw of what the recorders and clerks saw of what the plaintiff or prosecutor saw and of what the judge saw you can prove things by witness testimony if if there's something that doesn't get captured on the audio recording, like let's say that the bailiff just walks up behind the defendant and punches him in the back of the head, that wouldn't obviously be caught on the recording or probably won't be caught on the recording. Usually what the judge will say was like, you know, let the record show the bailiff just punched the defendant on the back of the head. But even if he doesn't, there's still witnesses there. It, it's not it's not like this is happening in secret. There's probably people in the gallery behind watching this trial. This isn't in secret. This isn't a secret court. 
uh, juveniles are typically done in closed courts, but they still preserve a record that a, an appellate court can review. So I don't, and if a judge, if a judge is out of line, then the judge, there's, there's the whole, there's, there are literally, um, ethics that are specific to judges. Like judges can't take gifts. Judges can't like do videos or do films for people or endorse people, etc. I mean, there's, there's a lot of ethical considerations judges have to abide by. And if the judges don't, then they, they face disbarment. They face sanctions. They face um, losing their, their judgeship. They face criminal charges. You can sue a judge if they, if they don't protect your due process rights. A 1983 lawsuit, you can sue a judge. In addition to whatever criminal sanctions that the judge may face for doing something horribly wrong. If it's just a legal issue where the judge makes a bad ruling, that's what courts of appeals are for. So yes, he could do whatever he pleases, but sub like it, subject to, it's like you could do whatever you want in your house, provided that you know you don't break any laws. The judge the judge is the ultimate arbiter of what goes on in his court, subject to the laws, subject to sanctions, and subject to appeals. You just proved he has a point. No, no, he thinks he has a point. You thinks he has a point. And no, I have not proved how sleazy the, the justice system is. There are a lot of checks in the justice system. The point of the justice system, you may disagree with how well it does it, and that's fine. You're, you're allowed your opinion. And the justice system is not perfect, and I will grant you that. There is no perfect system out there. As long as, as long as there are people involved, people aren't perfect, therefore the system can't be perfect. But it is the best system that we've come up with so far. I think it, I think it works better than a lot of other systems. A lot of countries will require the, the defendant to participate in the investigation against the defendant. I don't think that's terribly kosher. A lot of countries don't have a Fifth Amendment. They, they will require the defendant to testify and face further penalties if the defendant lies under oath. So if he's asked, did you commit this crime? And he says no, and then it's proved he commit the crime. Now he's facing perjury-esque charges, etc. So, Harry, why don't you come up with a better system? Why don't you come up with statutes? I already told you that you can change these things to a certain extent by statute. No, you really can't. I mean, to, to an extent you can, but it's always going to be up to the discretion of the judge or the chief judge on whether or not he's going to allow photography in the courthouse because, because of the interests of justice. But you could, you could theoretically make a statute that more narrowly tailors it to not prevent filming after or when there's no court in session or something along those lines. Anyway, I'm kind of getting off into the weeds here. Uh, the, the justice system isn't perfect, but there are a lot of checks and balances on it. And because you don't understand it, you think there's no accountability, but there is. There's a whole lot of accountability in the justice system. That's why there's, you know, habeas corpus and writs of mandamus and all sorts of other things that you can be used to compel judges to do certain things. And that's why there are courts of appeals, et cetera, et cetera. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.